farmer, friend, singer-songwriter, Lyle Strickland. And that's farmer, friend, and jack-of-all-trades, Chris Horn. And we're Those Those Taste Bud Guys. Oh, shenanigans and hijinks. We love them. (laughs) We love them. We're not drinking Irish whiskey. What do you mean, shenanigans? Oh, what's the Spanish word for... I knew you were going to say that. I don't have it. I have no no answer. I don't know. I'm not getting my phone out for it. Okay, welcome back, guys. Thanks for joining us one more time. Hope everyone is safe and sound and happy. And uh, if you're not, get your bottle of tequila and you will be. At least you'll be happy. I don't know about how safe you'll be afterwards. (laughs) Things tend to go south pretty quick after tequila. Um... Like, subscribe, share, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and YouTube. Yep. Um, we are, I, you know, I'm still not sure if we've got anything up on Instagram. Social Morgan. Get to it. Get to it. <laughs> you need to be all over that. Um, yeah, help us. Snapchat. Uh, yeah, there, you there you go. There you go. Follow us on Snapchat. I, uh, would, I think she's doing stuff on there. Go us. back and watch some of the old videos. Make a shopping list. Help us make a shopping list. If there's something you want to see us try or uh, review or uh, just uh, get drunk on, I don't know. We'll see. Whatever. Yeah. Shoot it down below in the comments. Yeah. Um, Chris, uh, I see this beautiful bottle of Jose Cuervo. We're gold. shooting Cuervo today. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> No, I'm over the tequila shot. Well, no, I'm not over it. I, I still say, like to shoot I've tequila. I've seen you take a tequila shot. I like tequila. <laughs> <laughs> but I've come around to the drinking part of it. Ah, there you go. Okay, uh, if you guys follow us on Facebook, you have already seen this. Yes. I will have to go back and watch it because I was drunk when we did it. I'm not going to comment on that. I want to say that was somewhere around <laughs> New Year's, wasn't it? I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> we was... We was right in the middle of tearing down the old studio, and man, we was already been... I remember someone saying, man, this would make a great Facebook Live video. You guys should go live. And we did. <laughs> and that's the last thing <laughs> I remember. That's the last thing I remember, too, is <laughs> vaguely getting on here and trying to review this. So we're going to give it a proper look today and try this again. And uh, this is Jose, about it. Jose Cuervo Reserva de la Familia. Um... This is not your typical well tequila junk margarita premixed stuff. This is uh, one of their higher end tequilas. Um, this runs about 130 to 140 bucks a bottle or so. Um, now, Cuervo, everybody knows them for their cheap, cheap stuff. Yeah, well, they're everywhere. It's a huge wait, name. Wait, is it recording? Yes. First, yes, we're actually recording now. Because we got the little red dot up there again. Yeah. No, that's good. We're, and you push that button over there? That one's recording. Yeah, we're good. Just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> he already did that to me last episode. Hey, we're, we're in the middle of our coronavirus stuff. We're recording a lot of episodes, and so there's <laughs> there's a lot of buttons not being pushed. <laughs> well, there's a lot of stuff missing in the studio we took home to work. With. That's true. Okay. Couldn't get this to the house. Um, yeah, so everybody's really familiar with the... Cuervo Gold, peppery, super hot, jump in there. But you know, Cuervo takes a little bit of a bad rap, but they're one of the oldest distillery. Oh, they're not a distillery. Are they a distillery? You don't distill it, do you? I don't know. It's What it's, is a tequila called? Is it still a distillery if, you, if you're making it? I don't. I'm calling it a distillery. <laughs> I'm making the statement now. <laughs> if that's not what it is, y'all need to change all your paperwork. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Declarations Um, are being made. Yes. While we're doing this quarantine thing. So uh, this is an extra Anejo, which means it's aged more than three years. Um, uh, Reposado is... Oh, so Blanco is unaged, right? Still barely meets the minimum for bourbon. What's that? Oh, three years? Yeah. Three years. Uh, Blanco, is it up to three months? Uh, Blanco, I believe, is uh, not aged at all. I think it can so just, be rested, but I don't think it's ever seen a barrel. And okay. usually it's just kind of like the gin of gotcha of uh, tequila. And Reposado is one. Or zero, zero, zero neutral spirit at all. Zero two one, right? One uh, Reposado, is it up to a year? I, can't I, always, I think I year. say six months a lot, but I think it, I, I'd read somewhere at six months, and I think officially I think it is a, up to a year. Yeah, and then Anejo is anywhere from one to three years. Anything past three years is extra sense. Anejo. Yeah, that would make sense, because yeah. an Anejo... Is one year. Maybe it's it's six months to a year for a Reposado. That's where I got that 
Yeah, from because anejo means a year, so it has to be there at the next start. Gotcha. So reposado means rested. So Long story short, this has been here a bit. This is this is at least three years. But that looks. Uh, you know, I'm gonna step up there because I really want you to see how this looks. It's pretty dark. It's about like a like a nice Islay Scotch color. Yeah, I know it makes things weird when I step in front of the camera like that, but uh, this was worth looking at. So for a tequila, that is incredibly dark. Well, and it's sticky gold. looking. It's gold colored. <laughs> But not artificially. Colored. It's almost copper colored. Yeah. It's got legs on it and everything. But yeah. the nose, there's nothing about it that screams Cuervo. No, it's not as um, sugary sweet vanilla on the nose as the Azul or the Don Julio 1942. Some of the other higher end tequilas that we've had. It's a little sharper. Also says Jalisco. So, so it's probably still a Highland. I don't know. I mean, the way they talk about the Highland Lowland thing is that the really um, peppery, astringent, lower end tequilas. Interesting, interesting notes in the nose. Sorry. Typically are in the Lowland area, which is what Cuervo normally is. Now, maybe they have a separate field they harvest from. I don't know. I don't know about them yet. But. So, the Azul is pretty much like straight vanilla on the nose. Maybe a little bit of caramel. This is really fruity. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say there's a lot of cherries in this one, but cherries uh, and like plums, stone fruit. Never had a stone fruit. <laughs> well, yeah. Mm. Okay, we did this. <laughs> we did these in a very good order. We started. On our, I said we didn't. On our corona, our coronavirus run, we started with the Aragante, which is a sort of a budget-friendly Anejo tequila. A little um, peppery. A little peppery, but, you know, hey, so you're starting your first recording session off with this. So, yeah, just have, have a drink of it. Uh, and then we went to the Classe Azul, which is super, super sweet, sweet and, like, vanilla and just beautiful candy. And we're getting ready to head into some bourbon, and this is a very nice transition because this could easily sit within some of the smoother bourbon territories flavor-wise. I think that's it. I think you nailed it on the head. What we're getting out of that is the wood, the oak. Mm -hmm. Or I assume it's oak. Tastes like oak. I mean, it's still very much tequila, but it resides in a bourbon sphere. Yeah. If you had a Venn diagram, there'd be some overlapping. Yeah. Which I assume is that three-year aging um, where the others are not although the Don Julio in 1942 is aged for two and a half years, just six months shy of an extra Anejo. It's not this dark but, though. No, it's nowhere near. Nowhere this near dark. it. So I wonder if that has to do with the type of uh, barrel. This says uh, we're learning. <laughs> well, I, I started. I seen it on here, but I'm squeezing the rest of it now. We we do little to no research before we start, and we also know. Little to nothing <laughs> when we start. <laughs> it's not always true. Sometimes we do. This says uh, new American and French oak barrels. Oh, okay. I thought it was just a French oak barrel. That was a difference, but it's saying American as well. And I don't. I mean, I assume. Okay, let me. Re How would you read that? New American and French oak. It, is it either or, or is it a transition between the two? And if so, why do they not call it a double wood or a double oak? I would assume that it's just a, a mixture, you know, of, you know, when they blend different barrels in, you know. I wish we did a little more look. Oh, you, so you're thinking they take some out of the American, some out of the French, and, and then they've got it, a guy yeah. going add this and this. Yeah. Okay. Give a little that more flavor, be. especially with the new American barrels, and that makes a lot of sense because it's got a sharp oakiness to it on the nose. It smells like you've uh, just ripped a oak board down the saw, you know? Yeah, I think uh, wood still, is the predominant yeah. flavor in that. There is almost a smokiness to it. Mm -hmm. Almost a mezcal-like. Almost. But it's, it's like a new wood. It's, it's similar to... I always go back to this because it's the sharpest quality of this flavor profile. Is that brimstone uh, scrub oak mm -hmm. whiskey. Um, 
And it's that that episode's up here. It sounds like, or it doesn't sound. It smells like a like a sawmill. Like literally, you took a rough sawn oak board, ripped it down the table saw, then threw it in a fire. Yeah, let it get rained on. Woke up the next day and bit into it. Yep, that's what it smells like. Which um, I actually don't hate that description. No. It makes me want to drink another glass. <laughs> we need to go back and get some more of that. That looks yeah. very good. Yeah. Um. So. This is a very different characters than the, some of the other ultra premium tequilas that we've had. This is also not what I thought I remembered about this tequila. Yeah. I uh, very much don't remember liking it that well. I remember thinking I liked it, and I want to say I sipped it one more time since then and went, nah. It's difficult when you're comparing it directly to the Sugar Sweet Azul 42. This would probably go better in comparison with the Avion that we tried that was a little more like this is tequila um, so yeah I I think that this one has a place next to some of those really sugar sweet ones in and of itself it's a very different character tequila it deserves a place on the shelf by itself I don't find any sweet in it though no it's it's very woody it's it's dry yeah. very very yeah. dry in, in, in all of its but flavor profiles that's sometimes that's what you're in for mm -hmm. um, you know it's like a it's way better than I thought it was yeah I'm just thrilled to go I'm <laughs> I'm really excited to make the transition from this straight into some bourbon I think this is gonna be oh, would you care to tease what we're getting ready to do next well sure we've done it every episode this far because I uh, forget that we release episodes out of order so you may find this next week you may find it three weeks from now we're not sure we're trying really hard to quit doing it. <laughs> we're getting ready to do um which one do you want to do first are we doing the whistle pig or the gentleman we're Jack? doing the whistle pig mm. is the next one we're gonna do but i don't know if that's the next one y'all are gonna see <laughs> we're trying <laughs> we're not we great got a couple more then we get to start drinking beer <laughs> we're not great with calendars and organization um what, do you have anything else about this Jose Cuervo not gold tequila? I just got a hint of peppermint in it. Oh, yeah, Which is yeah. really odd. Yeah. But it also kind of hit that little uh, tingly note in my head that went, mmm, Christmassy, good. And, yeah. Mm, it's weird. Which almost kind of like, hang on a second. If you guys get a chance, you should definitely take the time to find a good bar that has tequila yeah. sample some upper end stuff um I would if you're anything at all like us your eyes are going to be opened it has that finish like the bib and tucker that okay that minty after aftertaste um yeah i think that this one is if you like you said if you do have a bar near you that has some high-end tequila before you go out and spend 130 bucks on a bottle i would go try it Unless you're a big bourbon fan. If you're a big bourbon fan, just go ahead and buy the bottle. I think it finishes like a root beer. Like a really high-end, stringent root beer. I think we're finding excuses just to keep drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll shut up. All right, well, until next time. Whether it be the Cuervo you're shooting. The food you're eating. Clothes you're wearing. Uh, the people you're meeting. Are we shooting this? Grab a buddy. Try something new. <laughs> oh, God. It wasn't much. It feels like a shame to shoot that whiskey. Nope. Nope, it would, except that's not a whiskey. I only